Hello and welcome everyone. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, we ask every week we have an installment of Ask Epic that we meet and have the be absolutely best guest on ever. This week is no exception. We have an exciting uh, topics for you to, to discuss. So we're looking forward to, to talking about it later on here. Um, we like to provide new to Epic families and returning families a place to learn about all the opportunities we offer. I'm Carla Smitherman with the Epic Development Team. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Nunley, and I'm also with the Epic Development Team. I'm so happy to be here and thrilled to have all of you with us today. We are excited to learn more about two amazing programs that EPIC offers, which are our Gifted and Talented programs and STEAM. So if you have any questions regarding either of these programs, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions after the webinar is over, you can reach out to our department for more information at 405-4000651, or you can email us at edt at epiccharterschools.org. Yes, this is comes to be the fun part for, for me because I can't tell you we have so many exceptional uh, opportunities like we talked about that we offer and today is no different um, because we do individualize our instruction and we want our students to have unique opportunities and um, we tailor our teaching approach to each student by providing them with specialized resources and tools that foster critical thinking, reasoning and comprehension. And we all know on this call right now how important those things will be for them one day. In a world that demands 21st century skills, our guests today offer a myriad of opportunities for students to cultivate their talents and abilities, equipping them with the necessary knowledge to utilize these skills to be successful. And we want them to be great, right? When they leave Epic, they already are great, but these, these opportunities make them just enhance what they already have within them. Absolutely, Carla. So we have a lot of questions and a lot of information to get through today. So we're really excited about that. So I thought we'd start off with Patricia. Patricia, can you tell us um, what you call your program and a little bit about what you do? Yes, um, Epic's Gifted and Talented program is called Exceptionally Epic. And this program serves identified students in grades kindergarten through 12th. And it also is approved by the state. That is awesome. So you did touch on that, what ages qualify for the gifted and talented program. I'm mm -hmm. assuming that's ages five through. Yeah, um, um, for, yeah, through 12th, depending on, you know, when they graduate. So some graduate 17, 16, 18. Um, okay. our, pro our program looks to identify all, uh, to identify and provide students who possess this exceptional talent, um, the direction and time, encouragement and resources to fulfill their potential. So that's why it's called Exceptionally Epic. Love that. Uh, what are the steps to being identified as an exceptional student? So the steps to being identified are um, begin with the roster teacher and also it can begin with the parent requesting testing referral or nomination for their talent. Um, the roster teacher plays an important part of letting us know um, how to reach out to them for testing and, you know, um, and for the nomination forms that are located on our uh, EPIC page. Outstanding. Outstanding. You know, it continues to foster that partnership that we really all love within EPIC, that three-legged stool we always talk about, right, with the student, the parent and the teacher working hard together to help get best outcomes for our families. Would you agree with that? So this is just another opportunity for our families to work together and uh, foster the best outcome, like we mentioned. So, okay, so my next, my question is, <clears throat> who might get referred to your program? Okay, so those students who, there's kind of, there's two levels. We have the talent piece. Um, teachers can nominate students for in, in one or more areas through for their academic ability and creative thinking, leadership, performing arts, vocal and music. So um, we're always looking for talented students within EPIC, but also we have a, a, the cognitive piece, which is a student who demonstrates potential abilities or high performance in the top 3% on a national standardized test of intellectual ability. 
And then within that, they can qualify too by after taking a test, a cognitive test and academically. So we have the talent and we also have high potential ability, cognitive ability. And our plan uh, follows our state guidelines. So um, we're look always looking to identify more students within our school. That's awesome. So what, like I'm, I buy on, on my roster, if I have a student that's great piano player, do you think that would be a person that a student that might qualify? Possibly. Um, the teacher can just reach out, fill out a nomination form, um, have some supporting uh, documents or evidence of their talent, and we'll just go through the process. Wonderful. That sounds great. I just know that there's such great talent out there within Epic. So there are probably families that are yeah. chomping at the bit right now, <laughs> knowing yeah. that they might be able to have their student in this program. So can a teacher make a referral? You, I think you already mentioned that. So a teacher can make a referral. Yes. And I, teachers and parents can actually, parents can reach out to the um, the roster teacher and ask for a referral too. And we're happy to you know send referral forms out to parents too. Okay, great. Awesome. Where can we locate that referral form? So um, we have that on our Epic One page. Um, parents don't have access un unless they reach out to their teachers. So, and we're happy Absolutely. to share the form. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I love that. Okay, so if a student is classified, and we do get these questions a lot, if a student is classified as gifted, talented at another school uh, before coming to Epic, can they be in gifted and talented in EPIC or do they need to be retested? Does it just kind of flow over or do they need to start over? That's a good question. Um, the qualifying records from the prior di district are important and if parents have access to those, they can go ahead and submit those to the roster teacher or to our records department. Um, and yes, we accept gifted identification in, in other districts. So it's they don't have to be retested unless um, there's a transfer from states. Sometimes students who transfer from different states may have to be um, retested. Okay, that is perfect. Like I said, we get that question, I feel like quite a bit from parents who you know, want to know, okay, we're coming to Epic, what do we need to do? Do we need to retest our students, et cetera? So that is, that is really awesome. Um, can you be ELL or in special education and also be in gifted and talented? Absolutely. Um, the ELL and um, twice exceptional students are common within our gifted and talented program. So um, yes, that is, they're definitely identified and, and served within our program. Very good. Okay, thank you. It looks like we have a question from Lindsay and um, this is for you, Patricia. She's asking, what age do your gifted and talented a program start. She says she has a pre-K student. So is that, is that old yeah, enough? Um, well, pre-K and kindergarten, um, we actually will serve students that are identified in kindergarten, um, but we start testing in the spring of first grade for our, um, our gifted and talented program. Very good. So Lindsay, just hold tight. I'm sure your daughter will be ready to test one day. Okay. <laughs> so we appreciate your question. Thank you for that question. So um, let me ask you this question. Um, if a student, and I'm sorry, if I get into the program, would I keep my same teacher? Absolutely. Um, the roster teacher remains the same. Um, Nothing really changes, um, ex and even the core curriculum stays the same. Um, identification ha helps to provide opportunities and resources needed as a student um, excels, um, goes through our Epic Charter schools. So um, it provides more opportunities and enrichment support. That sounds wonderful. A, yeah, I think families would want to know that because they might not. I know the reason why that's a great question is I've, um, I don't know about you all, but many years ago when I was in school, we would change teachers. So mm -hmm. this is really good to know that they can still remain the same, the mm -hmm. same teacher. OK, I have another question um, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, but I believe this is Jock Duran. So the question is, is there more requirements requirements placed on the student? Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe what they mean is once they're in the program, are there more requirements? 
Um, that's a good question. Um, I was thinking about answering it, but I was waiting to see if anyone, but yeah, no, um, once a student's identified, a lot of times parents are like, are, are we going to receive more work? And um, I would say, no, you're not, the student is not required to do more work. Uh, we help support the student if more work is needed or more enrichment opportunities or uh, supplemental opportunities to help them with advanced coursework. But um, identification does not necessarily mean that a student will re be required to do more work. Very good. And thank you for that question. That is a great question. So are there specific um, times of the year that you can qualify for GT? Mm -hmm. Um, testing is ongoing beginning in October and running through the end of June. So if you're uh, looking for cognitive testing for your child, um, please reach out to the roster teacher for that. Um, but testing begins in October and runs through June. Good. So how do we test? How does a student test? So a, a student tests... Um, we have various microsites across the state, as well as we I'm testing public libraries to um, to meet the needs, just based on location of the families. Um, occasionally, we do tests remotely if needed. Um, we use uh, Nagulary Nat three tests and an Olset eight cognitive test. Very good. Sounds the same standard test that they use pretty much statewide. Correct. Some are similar. Yeah, it depends on the okay. district. Yeah. Okay, got you. Okay, well, we have one more question. And um, Jock is asking, is a test based on grade level knowledge or is it more critical thinking? That is a good question. Mm -hmm. um, the cognitive test is more, um, it is a, it's a thinking test that tests um, the verbal part of the brain and depends on the grade level, but the verbal and then the quantitative. So it seems to be more like a puzzle test um, than it is what we call an academic test. And it's standardized. So it's based on the age of the student at the time of the test. Very good. And Lindsay is asking, will teachers in the first grade recommend my daughter test if she's gifted and talented? Um, teachers are always looking. Um, for high performing students, high potential uh, advanced coursework. So if your child is, um, finds the curriculum too easy or it's, they may be a, a candidate for a referral. Okay, outstanding. And I mean, you know, as a parent, you know your student better than anyone. So I just offer this advice to you just to advocate for your student, just as my, um, I was a teacher prior to becoming an administrator this year, and um, I always encourage my families because you know your student best, right? So if you find and you feel very confident, I see Sarah as a parent and her background as well in education can concur with that one. I think that that's just the best advice ever. And it sounds like you're in a great position because you're interested, right? And you're in here listening and wanting to know information. So just continually advocate for them, communicate with your teacher consistently about what your, your questions are and that this is what you feel is best for your child. Okay. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Jock said, when can the student be tested? Can you answer that one for us again? Yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, October in October, after October 1, um, our testing window opens and continues through the end of June. Okay. And Lindsay's asking, will you put the test dates out somewhere for to notify us when it's testing happens? Oh, absolutely. Um, and just feel free to reach out to the roster teacher and the, or even me personally. So um, okay. if you're interested, Thanks. yeah. Very good, Patricia. And I think we'll talk about that in the end if you want to put your information in our chat. Patricia, I think that'd be a great idea so everyone can jot that down who's on the okay. call right now. Okay, I so I think the only other question I had, you I think you've pretty much asked that, but is it in person or on Zoom um, and what locations do you have? I think you may have kind of talked about yeah. it, but you can <laughs> answer that again for us. Um, we, we meet at the microsites across the state um, and at public libraries. So based on location and how many students are in that area, um, we are happy to accommodate 
as far as we do occasionally meet, um, I do occasionally offer testing um, remotely, but that's not best practices at this time, but it does happen if needed. Outstanding, thank you. Okay, okay Patricia. Um, is their curriculum solely for gifted and talented or do they use regular curriculum? I think you kind of touched on this earlier, but, um, you know, are there supplements or different assignments for gifted and talented, you know, in addition to what they're doing and say a student is bored with their third grade curriculum? And that does happen, we know. So do we add on additional curriculum just to keep those kiddos entertained and get their mind going? How do you kind of operate? <laughs> So that's a good question. Um, we stay with a core curriculum because that's what Epic has to or offer. So whatever the parent and the teacher decide. But as um, the teacher can reach, always reach out, we have an enrichment specialist that helps support students. Um, the supplementals we do offer, depending on the grade level, we have programming options that are available um, depending on the level. Um, younger grades, a lot of times, will would like to have Renzuli. We have a Renzuli enrichment, which is a an online enrichment platform that helps support with project-based learning. And um, upper levels, we have pre-AP pre and AP classes that help support advanced learners too. That is wonderful. That's a lot of great information for parents. Um, are there opportunities for meeting in groups or are there field trips for those identified and gifted and talented? Mm -hmm. Well, we come alongside with the Family Engagement Department and help support um, their setup, what they have around the state. And we try to meet with them, students in the specific areas, several times a year. And we call those uh, gifted gatherings. And um, we put out a, a monthly newsletter, exceptionally out, epic monthly newsletter that goes out with resources and information and lets parents know exactly um, what's coming up and we just follow along with the family engagement and help support that department too. That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. That's good. Very good. Okay. So I just, you know, one of the things that I really, you know, one of the most important parts I think of gifted and talented are the resources. And you, we've discussed this before, Patricia, and I think that was my, I think my, my mind was like, wow, when you talked about it the other day, please, please share with us about some of the resources that are available for our gifted and talented students. Well, the good news is that Epic has so many resources within it. And um, I know someone that's going to talk next, uh, he runs a program that helps support our gifted and talented students, but also um, we have academic competitions, um, Oh, different clubs that are available. But if parents are interested in even more resources than that, we have on our um, website, Epic's website, under programs, parents can look and scroll down and it'll tell you more about gifted and talented, exactly the expectations. And then there's a list of resources there too that help support um, learning for those students too. That's outstanding. Okay, thank you. So um, we see they have several options for students in the urban areas. What about our students in the rural areas? I think you were very passionate about this the other day. So love to hear yeah. what you have to say about this. Yeah, I am. I am passionate about serving students across the state. And since Oklahoma does have quite a, uh, a, lo a lot of uh, farmland and rural areas, um, students are um, can benefit from um, enrolling in Epic Charter Schools. And um, how we serve them. Well, one way is we have GT only Zoom classes that I have my enrichment, my, our, I've loved them too, but I have an enrichment specialist who helps foster that learning and they meet up online um, that help, and that helps too with um, serving those students in rural areas. And then, of course, Epic is virtual. So, students in virtual areas. Um, in rural areas can log in and have pre-AP classes, AP advanced coursework, the same um, quality of coursework that brick and mortar and ha may offer. Because small towns sometimes don't have the capability to be able to, to um, offer those courses. So I um, hope that answers your question. 
It really does because we know that we want to, like you said, we serve the whole state of Oklahoma. So we love that you're so passionate about the entire state, but specifically um, our rural areas. Patricia, you shared a great story um, about a second grade student um, that had tested for gifted and talented. I wonder if you would mind sharing that uh, that story again to kind of explain. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so I think so this is working my four, four and a half years ago. So I was first here and I was at uh, the gifted and talented program with, for um, Epic and I was hired to begin right and get it state approved. And one of the students that I identified in second grade um, who lives in a rural area, he has stayed with Epic and because of Epic's advanced coursework and um, rigor, he called, he uh, went to attended this, earlier this month, the OSSM state comp competition for mathematics. And he's a seventh grader and placed first place. He took it home. So anyway, a shout out to that student um so yeah i i was excited i remember testing him in second grade and um his parents drove him in from a small little rural town to oklahoma city to be tested and he stayed with us and amazing teachers and um took has taken part of what all you know the, all the different activities that epic has to offer so and he's that's a great success story we love those and especially ones that started with us and developed and cultivated through your program. That sounds wonderful. Absolutely. I love that, especially since you did touch on the fact that these are sometimes rural students that maybe feel like they don't have the same opportunity as someone mm -hmm. that lives closer to our bigger towns. So obviously we offer that to everyone and the success <laughs> stories are there. I love that. Okay, thank you so much, Patricia. We're gonna move on to Ben and ask you a few thank questions, you. Ben. Can you Hello. tell us what the acronym STEAM stands for and a little bit about what you do? Yeah, I'm the director of STEAM for Epic Charter Schools. Uh, many people know STEM, the word STEM instead of STEAM, um, but STEM and STEAM are the same thing. Uh, the acronym is Science, Technology, Engineering, and then we add the A for Art and then Math. And so that A, I think, is important. So at Epic, we call it STEAM because we always include art with it as well. Very good. Well, we are excited about this program. I think every time I hear STEAM now, I have to rethink th about what that means, right? So I love that, that we ha are adding on that art piece. So um, let me know what is the difference between STEAM and STEM? It really is almost the same, um, but whenever we include art with it, um, then it brings in so much more underneath that same umbrella. And so instead of just looking at it as a technology, it's sometimes STEM is commonly seen as science and technology, and that's like the end of the conversation, but there's still a lot more there. But when we add art, it's really, uh, it brings in a whole new dynamic because whenever we're doing science or whenever we're doing technology or whenever we're doing math, all of these are like really exciting ways of engaging students. And when we include that art piece, then it takes it from just strictly science or strictly technology to a whole new level uh, of creativity and uh, creating things for our students. That is outstanding. These opportunities are just things that will catapult them to even catapult them to great things. So I'm glad yes, we're getting started absolutely. with this. <laughs> so I hear we have a STEAM lab in Z-Space. Can you tell us where those are located and what they are? Sure. Yeah, I'm developing those right now. So uh, for those of you who've been following Epic for a little while, Z-Space has been a technology that we've been using for the last three years. And it's like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, computers. And so we've strictly had Z-Space labs to this point. Uh, we're pivoting now from Z-Space labs to STEAM maker spaces or STEAM labs is what we're calling them. And it's really gonna be an exciting place for in-person engagement for our students and our teachers. Um, I'm currently setting them up as we speak, one at 50 Penn and one at Logan Building. Those are our hubs. We're gonna work on moving those out as well uh, to rural areas as discussed earlier. But in those STEAM labs, we're gonna have um, iPads that are connected to 3D printers. And these 3D printers are called toy box printers. And so students can come in and print fidget toys and uh, make their own 
toys and, and choose from um, like a roster of toys that they can print right there. We're also going to have MetaQuest 3, which is virtual reality headsets there. We'll have merge cubes. We'll have like Lego robotic stuff, but not just that technology piece, the art piece and the math piece as well. And so for our younger students, especially, we're going to have uh, hundreds of Legos and uh, um, wooden blocks and STEM kits and like all the little things you use in STEM, pipe cleaners and cotton swabs and that sort of thing. So we're excited because it's going to be a fully stocked STEM lab for all of our students. I, I think I, I remember thinking, as we've discussed this before, there's nothing better than fun and learning. And you combining Absolutely. those together, that's what yeah. you're doing. You're getting yes. that fun in and that enjoyment hands on and yes. then you're learning. So that's, that's awesome. Right. I agree totally. And Patricia can can speak to this also if she would like. But also whenever our students meet with our teachers in person and are having fun together in person, then it develops that relationship, which is so needed for our students and the teachers to really be able to effectively teach and learn together. That's great because we are in virtual spaces that when we come together and have those absolutely great times, it does develop that relationship, which is what we want. That's right. That's the goal of our STEAM labs. That's precisely what we're looking for. Very good. Thank you. Uh, ben, I absolutely love this. I did have a student, one of my kiddos that was involved in STEM. It wasn't STEAM, but he absolutely had such a great time with it. Um, and so getting involved with STEAM sounds like a lot of fun for any of our students. Um, can you kind of talk more about what happens in the lab? Like, is it you know, like what goes on? Is it a, a station for each student or do you kind of have it guided? Yes, so we will have stations for um, different stations. So there'll be a station for the 3D printing. There'll be a station for the um, virtual reality headsets. There'll be a station for like art and creating. And so we can handle multiple students of different age levels. Um, and then they would come with their teacher into these labs. And then there's what I call a menu. And the teacher or the student will be able to pick from the menu on what they want to do today. And that once they pull from the menu, they'll have um, like QR codes as well as written instructions on if you want to do virtual reality, today, virtual reality today, here's the activities we can do. Here's the learning prompts and here's how the teacher can lead that. Um, if you want to do Legos today, here's some ideas for Legos. And so it's really going to be uh, like a one hour time for teachers and students to just come in and just see what's available, pick something out. And then it's really uh, the the um, script is written for them. They just need to follow the script and enjoy their time in the lab. Outstanding. That sounds great. Um, we have a question from Lindsay is when will they have labs at the Tulsa school campus site? Um, the lab that is in Tulsa is gonna be Tulsa Logan building, which is right next to that site. And I know that in the past, a lot of our teachers have brought students over to that lab because it's just across across the walkway there. Outstanding, very good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I know we have this fun uh, activity called a merge cube. Yeah. And I almost could not wait to get to this, this <laughs> question because it was so exciting as we listened to it, you discussed it the other day. Um, let us know a little bit about the merge cube. Sure. So earlier, Patricia spoke about rural students. This is our department's um, favorite thing that we've been able to roll out so far that has been for students across the entire state. Merge Cube, uh, you can easily Google it if you'd like to. It's a technology that isn't widely known, but it is uh, known pretty well in education. Um, what a Merge Cube is, is it's simply a cube, um, maybe four inches by four inches, and it's just a squishy foam cube. And that's really what the technology is. But it acts like a 3D QR code. And so when you have the app downloaded on your phone or on your Chromebook, when you're holding the merge cube in your hand, it turns into uh, different models, different scientific experiments. And so you'd be able to hold, literally hold um, a globe, the world, and you'd be able to see current temperatures in the last two days, almost live. Ice formations, wildfires that are happening around the world. You can see all of those um, almost in live time, real time as well as things like dissecting frogs and looking at um, like a human skull or comparing snake skulls. And so I can actually hold the cube. And as I turn the cube through the, um, through the camera, it looks like it's turned into something else. And then I can actually stamp that in space 
and I can have multiple models sitting in my room and I can walk around those, those uh, in three dimensional space, walk around the models and inspect them. I can, anyway, it's a, there's all kinds of scientific experiments. And so each teacher has a merge cube and all students and all teachers have access to the apps for free because Epic's already paid for those. And then if a student wants a cube, they can easily purchase a cube, but they can also, there's a PDF um, file that I have that the students can cut out um, a template and then tape it together. And now they have a paper cube that functions in the same way as the foam cube. And so all of our teachers, all of our students across the state have access to this amazing, what we call augmented reality education. That is so wonderful. That sounds like such an exciting and wonderful tool. I can see teachers really enjoying that and sharing that with their students. So yes, all I need is, is a student, it's a, a rolled up piece of paper and I'm good to go, right? Yes, that's right. And then you would download the apps through Clever. So you'd go into Clever, download those merge apps. Um, and then once you have them, you're able to explore. On, uh, the students can literally explore all the apps, all of the stuff on their own, or they can be led through it on the teacher, I, either way. That's wonderful. That's so wonderful. Okay. So uh, another question I have for you now, Ben, is do we have something available for our pre-K, K, and first graders? Yes. For those young ones, our department, what we offer beyond the uh, STEM labs, the STEAM labs that are there, we also have what we call music and math connections. And it's a wonderful curriculum that uh, connects the idea of music and the concepts of music with early learning math. And it's amazing. The students go through uh, like a hypothetical story, uh, a train ride. And as they go through the train ride, they listen to unique music and then look for patterns in the music and look for patterns in math. And they wor work on graphs and simple addition and, and subtraction. And so it's really a neat program. For those students that that is offered online as well as in person different days of the week oh that is wonderful i can see a lot of students taking advantage of that especially with that age i mean that's such a great age to begin all kind of creative and connection type of activities so thank Absolutely. you for that that yes. outstanding yeah so um miss mr slayer is asking how do you qualify for the steam program Good question. So to this point, everything that we offer within the STEAM program is um, it's free. It doesn't come out of the learning fund. It's just something that Epic has as an addition to what the students are learning already. And so you don't need to qualify it. The, the only way to qualify for it is the fact that you're a student at Epic. Whenever you're a student at Epic, you are qualified, which is pretty exciting. And then it's just a matter of going through your teacher or contacting me and getting involved in these programs. Um, you may be asking the question soon, but our STEAM clubs are also a wonderful thing that we have that you don't need to qualify for, but it's more opportunities for our students. Okay, I think Lindsay's asking, can her daughter be involved in pre-K? I think that she can based on yes, what Yes, absolutely. So for pre-K, we have the music and math connections. And then we also have a pre-K, K and first grade um, we have those STEM clubs in the Tulsa and Oklahoma City areas for, for students that age as well. Wonderful. All yeah. ages in, uh, can participate, which is great. Yes. Okay. All right. And Sarah, do you have is, any more questions? I do. Actually, I have a couple more questions for you, Ben, because this is such an, just an interesting, I mean, STEM is just so interesting. And I think a lot of parents probably aren't aware that it's available for their students yeah. and getting them yeah. involved. So you, you mentioned you offer several clubs. Can you kind of talk about that? Maybe how students get involved, how often they meet? Sure. Yes. So this year we had uh, six, six uh, STEAM clubs that were based on age. So we'd have like the youngers and then the middles and the high schools. And those are ran by teachers that have a passion for STEAM. And they meet for five weeks each semester for about an hour and a half. And at the end, there's some project they've been working for for the whole semester. And so we have those six, six STEAM clubs each semester. And then on top of that, we also have an engineering club for our high school students, as well as a 3D print club as well. Uh, 3D print club is the one that's offered mostly online, which is exciting uh, for students who don't live in the Oklahoma City and, and Tulsa metro areas. Um, so those are we, we uh, have signups for those at the beginning of each semester. So if your student is interested in that, be checking your emails, be checking all of our communication channels in the first week or two of school. That's when we open up um, those STEM clubs. 
we have to wait because our teachers have to schedule, you know, when it works for their schedules. And so they're not always able to make those determinations until the start of each semester. So that's why we have to wait for a, for a couple more months still on that. That's great, Ben. I have to put another plug in for check your emails, Epic Families. Yes, right? do. yes. We have this uh, conversation a lot as teachers, administrators, please, please check your emails. I know sometimes um, the the email system is kind of a dinosaur, right? <laughs> when it comes to communication, but we truly rely on that within Epic. So that helps us to make sure we're facilitating, communicating and corresponding with you as a family. So Correct. Ben, we had a question dropped in. Uh, would the learning fund cover a merge cube for a student if they wanted an actual cube and not just a paper one? You asked, you've got... You've got the same mind that I do. I've been asking that question since we rolled that, that out this year. The answer right now is not yet. I'm hopeful soon. There have been some obstacles with that. Um, if you go online and buy a Merge Cube, they are pretty cheap because it is just foam. You won't need to buy the curriculum attached to it. You just need the physical cube. I'm hopeful that our learning fund can cover that in the coming months, but I don't have any guarantees one way or the other, but I am trying. That's awesome. That is awesome. And I have a feeling that's probably going to take off and we're going to see a lot more students uh, with those merge cubes, which is amazing technology. It's um, really amazing. It is amazing. It, it Anyway, um, if parents are interested in their students, you mentioned this at a start of school, takes a couple months getting involved in that. Do they just need to wait until the first of school and watch for those emails? Do they talk to their teachers ahead of time? What would you recommend if they're like, they're learning about this in April and they're gung-ho and their kiddos are going to be ready come fall. Sure. Yeah. Come fall for those STEAM clubs. The best thing you can do is probably email me uh, at the start of next semester or the start of next year. If I get an email from you and you say that you're interested in those STEM clubs, then I'll put you on like a mailing list that will give you that like a, like a window before the signups to just say, since you showed interest, I'd like to put you on a list to, to get you that email early, make sure you hear from us quickly. But otherwise, it'll just be an email that comes out early fall. Yep. But as far as Merge Cube um, and our Steam Labs will be next fall, and then Merge Cube, you could do that tomorrow. So that's the one that you could, you could do immediately. I love that. That is that is super great information for our families. Um, is is that something we can get from you? Like maybe your email, we can drop that in the chat. Sure. And, yep. yeah. I'll drop and you know, can both of you do that for us? Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That way, because I have a feeling we're going, you're probably going to get blown up here pretty <laughs> soon with, with wanting information, both about gifted and talented yeah, get and ready. STEAM. Uh, so just, yeah, definitely get ready. Uh, do we have any other questions, Carla? Do you see any more in the chat? This has been such a great, um, a webinar so far. I hope that everyone has gotten all their questions answered, but if you all can put, both of them have put theirs in the chat box and I'm going to copy and paste this and put it for everyone to see. And you all, please feel free to reach out to them. Also, um, are there, is there information on our website that they could access? Patricia, Ben, can you all both speak to that? Yes, there is. Um, ours still isn't updated yet. All of our information is still ZSpace Lab because that's what they have been until about a week ago. And so as those are updated, you'll see more on the labs coming soon. Uh, but as for the STEAM clubs and Music and Math Connections, those are up there. Outstanding. Thank you. Good. Okay. The more we know, the more we grow. <laughs> so <laughs> I just love getting more information out there to our families. Patricia, did you want to touch on anything um, towards the end? I know we kind of peppered you with questions at the beginning. Is there anything you'd like to follow up with as well? No, I just thank you for the opportunity today to, to be able to share about our exceptionally epic gifted and talented program. And um, parents can feel free to reach out to me um, for any questions that they may have. So I appreciate the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're, you're welcome. You're so yes. We're glad you both are here today. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us today at Epic. We prioritize the development of every child and supporting the educational growth of our students goes beyond traditional subjects like math and reading um, as, as evidence today. 
Um, it's about guiding them to develop skills that will serve them well beyond high school. And that obviously you guys are promoting that and what you're doing every single day with our students. Um, and we are really deeply grateful for our STEAM and talented, talented, gifted teams and the opportunities that they provide our students. Um, we know that they strive for excellence in cultivating this in unique and fun ways. So this is this has been amazing, and I've enjoyed so much getting to talk to you both and learning all that you do. And I have no doubt that everyone that's tuned in and will watch this in the upcoming weeks or over the summer will also learn so much about gifted and talented and STEAM that they did not know. Absolutely, we have so 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 grateful that Epic is um, extraordinary and making sure we have these opportunities. So Ben and Patricia, thank you every day for what you do to make sure these are available for our families. So anyway, um, Sarah and I are part of a great team that is still enrolling people. We're enrolling 2024, 25, right, Sarah? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, if you have not enrolled for 20, 2024, 25. Please, please, please reach out to us. Our team is ready and available to answer any questions and just excited to get you going for next year. So you're, you, too, can have your family and your student in the gifted program or the STEAM program for next school year. Um, but anyway, if you still have any questions about our programs or anything discussed today, or maybe you're considering, I already mentioned enrolling, um, and you need more information about that, please reach out to our team at 405 400-0651 or email us at edt at epiccharterschools.org. And like I said, our team is ready, willing, and able to answer any questions you might have. And we're happy to answer any questions. And that's about all today. Again, thank you for, to our guests. It was amazing. It was wonderful. And I hope everyone learned a lot of information about STEAM and about our gifted and talented program here at Epic. So thank you all for joining us. Have a great day and see you all next week. Bye-bye.